Good morning and welcome to Centerpoint Church. Thank you for tuning in. We are so excited to host you this morning. Excited is an understatement. I've been counting down the days till we go up back in church and it's finally here. Church Online cannot wait for, for this morning. Again, a special shout out to all the lovely ladies. We hope you enjoyed your special Sunday last weekend as we celebrated all women here at Centerpoint Church. And we want to give a special shout out to Tina Mancuso from Sugar Drops. Yeah, awesome. Amazing cookies. I think Peter ate mine. But I know. Even though I wasn't one of the mothers or one of the women, I still enjoyed those cookies. So thank you very much. Reaping the benefits, of course. Yes. On that note, we just really want to um, encourage you guys this week to head to Centerpoint Church website, cpchurch.net.au. The link is in the comments below, so click that link. Um, head there. That's where you're going to get all your information on what is going on at Centerpoint Church online during the week. Although we are online church, we are still having so much on. There's so much to get involved in. Click that link and head to the website where all the information is available to you. Absolutely. And on that note, we are connected more than ever and we have our wonderful worship team ready to take us through to worship. We'll see you all on the other side. Good morning, Centerpoint Church. How awesome is it to be in the presence of God this morning? We're so grateful to be able to come into your homes and worship God with you there. And uh, this morning, we just want to bless, bless the name of the Lord. We want to celebrate with you for all the things that he's done, all the things that he's going to do over this uh, this time in lockdown and, and the fact that Dan Andrews has lessened those restrictions and we're, uh, we're able to get out and see people again. So praise God for that. Um, I hope that you've invited some people over for church this morning, seeing as though we can have people over again. And, uh, and let's start to uh, really enjoy what God is doing in our, uh, in our church with this online platform in Jesus' name.
good is God this morning? We're going to be singing How Great Is Our God. But before we get into that, I want to read this scripture out from Isaiah in chapter 40. And starting in verse 9, he says, O Zion, you who bring good tidings, get up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem. You who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand, and his arms shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He'll feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and then carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. Who has measured the waters in who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Measured heaven with a span and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. Weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord? Or as his counselor who has taught him? With whom did he take counsel and who instructed him? and taught him the path of justice, who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding. Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket and counted as a small dust on the scales. Look, he lifts up the isles as a very little thing and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor its beasts sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing and they accounted by him less than nothing and worthless. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness do you compare him? The workman molds an image, the goldsmith overspreads it with gold, and the silversmith casts silver chains. Whoever is too impoverished for such contribution chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeks himself a skillful workman to prepare a carved image that will not totter. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell? He brings the princes to nothing. He makes judges of the earth useless. Scarcely they should be planted. Scarcely, scarcely they should be sown. Scarcely should their stock take root in the earth. And he will also blow on them and they will wither. And the whirlwind will take them away like stubble. To whom then will you liken me? Or to whom shall I be equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things, who brings out their host by number. He calls them all by name. By the greatness of his might and the strength of his power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be faint. How great is our God. How great is our God. Praise you, Jesus. Darkness tries to hide. 
trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God.
Awesome was that worship, guys. That was so good. Special shout out to our band. You guys are killing it. Keep going, guys. Every week you're getting better and better. We love worshiping with you guys. Bringing worship into the homes, there's no greater blessing to that. So we honor you and we thank you for what you bring in week in, week out. Yeah, speaking of coming to the homes, Connect Group is a great place to get connected in the comfort of your own home. You think having church at home home is good? Try Connect Group. You get to sit at your own house on your own computer and chat with your friends just like you were in their house. It's so good. We love it. I mean, we struggle to get offline by 10, 10.30 every time. It's Not just that been late. Okay, I might be exaggerating. But either way, it's been a great time to connect with others, especially in these times. And not only through Connect Groups, but we can also do that through the many programs available across the week. Yeah, that's it. We have so much available to you guys in, in the comfort of your own home. We have daily devotions with Pastor Trish. We have Walk the Talk on a Thursday night. We have Together Tuesdays. We have um, Weekday Wellness with Diana, where she's taking us through all the nutritional and um, workout videos that she's doing, there, which are so good. So really, yeah, we just encourage you guys to tune in during the week. There's so much on offer here at Centerpoint Church. Absolutely. We are really blessed bountifully with amazing talent and gifts in our church. Yeah. And speaking of talents and gifts, we are going into a time where we offer our thought around giving. And we just want to continue to thank you guys for pressing in, investing in us as a church, and especially investing in us, the community. And this week, to give a thought around giving, I've been taken to the scripture in Isaiah, and it reads from chapter 1, 41, sorry, chapter 41, verse 18 to 20, and I read from the Amplified Version, that I will open rivers on the barren heights and springs in the midst of valleys. I will make the wilderness a reed pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will put the cedar in the wilderness, the acacia, the myrtle and the olive tree. I will place the juniper in the desert together with the box tree and the cypress so that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this, that the Holy One of Israel has created it. Well. And I think that was such a timely word for the season that we are all currently in. Yeah. And I'm not talking just relationally and in terms of being connected, but also financially. And we are blessed to be in a country where they are safeguarding us and keeping us from yeah. hard times and troubles. However, there is still a pinch and some people might be feeling that restraint. But do know that God is on your side. Yeah. That if you continue to invest in him, trust his word and keep his promises, that you are his faithful child, that he will protect you and keep you out of harm's way. So yeah. just an encouragement this week to press in, trust God with your finances and he'll deliver the rest in the dry season that we're in. And he will always provide us with the land of milk and honey. Yeah. So continue to invest and trust that God has got this. That's awesome. That's such an awesome and timely word, Lara. That's really great. I really enjoyed that. Um, on that note, guys, that's all from us this morning. I know that is disappointing. I know you guys love spending so much time with us, but we're going to send you off to Pastor John as he, as he shares the word. So get ready for Pastor John. Here he is. Well, hello and welcome to Center Point Church. I trust you've been enjoying the day so far, and I pray this finds you well. And I want to thank you again for giving us the opportunity to come into your home again today. Well, um, if you're in Australia, uh, this week we had the announcement from our Prime Minister that restrictions were going to ease. And depending on what state you're in, uh, those restrictions are being rolled out um, in particular ways. I'm in Victoria, so there's three parts to that rollout and uh, not much has changed uh, for us, but I know that our God remains the same. And this morning, I mean, now the talk around has been about vaccination and, you know, about downloading applications so that, you know, we're, we know that everyone's going to be okay. And in reality, our immune system is the best form of defense against the coronavirus and other viruses. And that really got me thinking because that's been the talk that people have been saying and, and doctors that really believe, hey, get your immune system up. And they've been giving us some key things to do to get our immunity strong, our immunity built up or to increase that so that we can fight uh, viruses. And that got me thinking about 
our spiritual life and um, spiritually transmitted viruses or spiritually transmitted diseases and especially that that spiritual disease called fear or that virus called fear and any other viruses and you know what today our best defense against spiritually transmitted viruses or spiritually transmitted diseases is our spirit and today i just want to really talk around that and what a great opportunity to build up both hey to build up our physical immunity as well as our spiritual immunity and uh, if you're a, a watcher of center point church you'll know that every day monday to friday we have d that brings us some fitness some workout and she's added nutrition to that so helping our body stay healthy which also helps our immunity so i thought hey around this isolation time let's just talk about that and unpack that and you know the immune system I did some research and the immune system um, is designed to protect our bodies. It's designed to protect it from disease and other damaging foreign agents that come into our bodies. And when we have a functioning immune system that's going well or properly functioning, um, it identifies and it attacks the various threats that try and come in to damage our body. Things like bacteria and parasites and viruses, as we're talking about right now. And it has the ability to uh, distinguish between what is a bad virus so it doesn't also uh, do damage to the good tissues in our body. So our immune system is able to protect our good tissues and also go on the attack to those virus or foreign agents, which is awesome. And I know that our God, the Creator, created us for that. Science will tell you otherwise, but I know that our God has created us to do that. We're taught that natural immunity occurs through chance contact. So not deliberate, but chance contact. And with a disease-causing uh, agent, so that causing agent that comes into our body uh, comes in by chance and our body being at a place where it is strong and the immunity is strong, what it does, it rises up and protects itself from that foreign agent. So that's natural immunity. But then on the other hand, uh, where artificial immunity develops, and that's what the big talk is at the moment, it, it comes in through a deliberate addition to our body. It comes in via injection, uh, sometime, most times, and when it comes in, it's, it's in a form of a vaccine, which stimulates uh, the primary properties in our body to, to awaken or to give it a spike, so it, it then creates blockages against that foreign agent. Now, what I do want to say before we continue is that, you know, I'm not here to discuss necessarily whether uh, you know, my views on artificial or natural immunity. But what I do want to say on the outset is, is that our physical immunity is important. It's vital to our lives. So we need to uh, spend time, we need to invest time into building up and increasing our immunity so that foreign agents or viruses, bacteria, parasites will not get through to those vital parts. But having said that, equally or more important is that we build up our spiritual immunity because our spiritual immunity deals with our spiritual life and with our eternity. And there are spiritual transmitted viruses, parasites, bacterias uh, that we need to be careful of because some are very contagious and extremely dangerous. Now, most of these diseases come in through three ways and today I want to talk about one of them now the three ways that these spiritually transmitted diseases come in are through our eyes our ears and our heart and today I want to talk around the heart now I'm sure you have heard this term if you haven't heard it before um, I have and I know many may have but the term hurt people hurt people come on that term again hurt people hurt people simply means that a person who is hurt potentially hurts others and the reality is is that whether you've been uh, through uh, relational and emotional abuse or any other means when hurt is not adequately dealt with 
we find ourselves uh, transmitting hurt on others. And sometimes unbeknownst to us, not even meaning to hurt others, but naturally because we're carrying this, because it's now in us, now it comes out of our life and we tend to hurt others. When the heart becomes infected, it operates with irregularities and resulting uh, in regular dysfunction. So it's irregular because it's infected, but then it regularly operates dysfunctionally because there's a heart problem. We have a, a heart virus or a, or a heart disease. And the fact of the matter is, is that what you believe in your heart affects and plays out in your life. This is what happens. Uh, most decisions you make are not made in your head. They're actually made in your heart. They're decided in your heart. Most decisions uh, have already been made not by what you think, but by what we've believed in our heart. And the reason why we think that decisions are made in our head, because at times we might be pondering or processing, depends what you do, whether you ponder or process. Um, and again, you know, you might be doing both. But because we do that, we think that decisions are made in our head. But in most cases, uh, we're, what we're actually doing is drawing down deep within the well of our heart where we've already deposited and predetermined our belief system and we draw out from our heart. Proverbs 23, 7 says this, For as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. It doesn't say, for as a man thinks in his head, so he is. So in other words, the heart is where we develop our belief systems. And I don't know if you've heard this before too, uh, we don't get what we want, we get what we believe. We don't get what we want, we get what we believe. Because what does believe mean? It means to trust and to follow. And I want to say here today, the best person, the best being to trust and follow is our infallible God. Come on, the one who came, the one who died, the one who sent Jesus, the one who gave us the blood, the, the most powerful agent that, that delivered us from sin, uh, that covers our lives, that, that fills us with the spiritual immunity that we need, the Word of God. Um, you know what? To believe means to trust and follow. And this morning, I want us to trust and follow the things of God because I'm going to be sharing in a moment, as you'll see, that that is the key to our spiritual immunity. So guarding the heart or keeping it healthy uh, so the immunity is strong enough to fight viruses is essential. In fact, having a resilient heart is extremely important so that we get to enjoy the promises of God that He has for our life. You might say today, hey, John, you're just stating the obvious. Sure, it's important. But you know what I've found? I'm surprised how many people say it's obvious and how many people say it's important, but yet will not invest in spending time strengthening their spiritual immunity. This is what Proverbs 4.23 says. This is a book of wisdom. So got some wise words for us to listen to today. Uh, 4.23 says this, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Come on, this is for us to do. It's our responsibility. Someone's saying, you keep your heart with all diligence. In other words, be focused on this. Uh, come on, let's protect your heart. You make it the, the, the one thing that you are determined to do, that's diligently, to keep your heart. So here, the word keep also means to guard. So why are we to guard our hearts? Because I'm sure you know this, but I'm just going to remind you that the reason why we guard our hearts is because all things that are valuable, all things that are important, all things that are uh, significant in our life that we love are in our heart. And not only that, because it's in our heart, this scripture tells us that it springs out, it comes out of our heart, not out of our head, but it comes out of our heart. Again, uh, confirming what we've been, been talking about. And here's the thing, if we walk around 
with a heart disease, we're more prone to suffer heart attack. And the same is true for our spiritual heart. A spiritually diseased heart is especially dangerous because when it fails and what we call cardiac arrest or heart attack, not only does it affect us, but it arrests others. It attacks others. So not only are you having a heart attack, a spiritual heart attack or a spiritually diseased heart, but we tend to arrest others and we tend to attack them with what's happening in our life. See, an unhealthy heart carries with it a variety of spiritual diseases. And that's why today, you know what, today, if you have a diseased heart or there's, there's a problem, you might have a, a palpitating heart. You know what, you might have a heart that skips a beat, a spiritual heart I'm talking about, that you're not sure that there's something going on in there. I'm saying to you, have surgery right now. Come on, let's have some emergency surgery right now. There's no waiting lists. Come on, you don't have to uh, update your insurance when it comes to this uh, operation that I'm talking about. In fact, uh, God through Jesus has underwritten your insurance and he's come with the blood of Jesus and he wants to give you a brand new heart. And today, if you've never received a brand new heart, would you like to do that right now before I move on? And I'm speaking to people maybe this morning that have never had a brand new heart. I've never had a transplant, okay? Before we move on, who have never had a transplant. How, you say, how do you get a spiritual transplant? It's quite simple. Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago and died on the cross and he defeated the power of sin and death, went in the grave and overcame and now he carries immunity for us. And it's in the form of a brand new heart, a brand new life. And today he wants to give that to you, but he needs you to say, I want the operation. So will you, what right now, if you want that operation, come on, if you know that your heart has never had a heart transplant, a spiritual heart transplant, and the blood of Jesus, which is the, the most powerful agent to any foreign um, diseases, any bacteria or parasites, I want you to raise your hand as I pray for you right now. Dear Lord Jesus, those who are raising their hands for the first time, Lord, you know who they are. You see who they are. And now, Lord, as they say, I receive my brand new heart. Thank you for taking away my old heart of sin and renewing me with a pure heart after your heart. I say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, if you've done that, that's so amazing. I mean, I did that 33 years ago and received a brand new heart. And for those that are watching and listening and say, hey, I've done that before, but you know what? I've got some, some problems with my heart right now. And that's true. You know what? We're not immune to the uh, parasites, uh, to the bacteria, to those spiritual diseases that try and attack us, but we can build our immunity now with our brand new heart. And we're going to be talking about how to do that. And it's with right believing. Did you know that Wrong or defective believing affects everything. It affects the way we view things. It affects the way we make decisions. Uh, our actions follow those decisions, which affects your future and those that you carry into your future and those in your world. So you're saying, okay, John, you've told me all of that. Now, how do we strengthen our spiritual hearts? How do we increase and build our spiritual immunity. Well, I've got a couple of scriptures here that I'd like to read uh, because these two guys uh, found the, the, the health process to having a, a, a strong, resilient heart and to boosting or increasing or building their immunity. And the first scripture we're reading is Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. And here's what it says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or sit with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all that they do. The second scripture I want to read is from Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. 
But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made their Lord their hope and their confidence. They are like trees planted along the riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. How awesome are those two scriptures? And the beginnings of those are a little bit different, but then uh, halfway through, both of those are saying the same things. Just a little bit uh, different wording. But here's the advice from Dr. David and Dr. Jeremiah about how to have a strong immune system or how to build that up. And it's simply trusting in God and delighting in His Word and making Him your hope and your confidence. It's a decision. It's a decision of the heart. And some of you today have made that decision for the first time. So you're starting on a foundation that is going to be strong. And what we're going to do today is just unpack this a little bit further, just to know and, and to understand how we can continue building our immunity system, our spiritual immunity. Notice what it says in Psalm 1, that this particular person does not decide to take advice of the wicked. Now, uh, who are the wicked? Simply put, those that have contrary messages or are contrary to the word of God, to the truth that God speaks. Contrary to that. That's who the wicked are. Now, uh, or stand around with sinners. Okay, sinners, you're saying, well, John, I'm a sinner. I was a sinner. Well, I'm saying this. I'm saying the person that is, is increased and, and their immunity is being built doesn't just stand there, isn't just like not part of the furniture. In fact, they don't stand in the way, they actually offer help, they offer a, a solution. But how do we offer a solution if we don't have strong immunity? And then thirdly, they don't sit in with mockers. In other words, sitting around and, 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 and mocking people, making fun and light of others and, and pulling down truths and, and, and not uh, standing in the Word of God, but yet, you know what, taking life and pulling others down. You know, have you ever sat in a room where that's happening? The person that has increased, the person that builds up spiritual immunity doesn't stay in that place because they don't want to be open to spiritually transmitted diseases. In fact, these guys uh, practice what we call today social distancing. They're at, a, they're at a distance enough that they can have input. They're at a distance enough that they can offer solution, but they're not going to just sit there, take advice. They're not going to just stand there and do nothing, uh, but yet they're going to be ones that are going to be bringing a solution. How? How do they do that? Well, the Bible says here, because they're planted along the riverbank. Come on, they're planted where there's water. There's waterways. And in fact, their roots go so deep, the Bible says, uh, their roots go deep to the underwater waste, to the veins that are going on underneath. And that's important. Why? Because they're not bothered by any isolation or crisis. Come on, they're not bothered by what's happening above the ground because what's going on underneath, what's going on within the heart where the Holy Spirit is there, they're deep within a relationship with their God and with Jesus and they're feeding on the Word of God uh, where it's not just surface stuff. Come on, it's not just we're having some surface talks here. Come on, we're getting deep. We're getting in relationship. We're, we're opening up areas in our life where we want God to come in. And here's what happens. Their leaves stay green. What does that represent? It represents that they are a shelter. Come on, they're a covering for others. And right now, if you're one whose heart is strong, Come on, your immunity is strong. Well, your leaves are green and people are going to be coming to you. People are going to be looking for answers and you'll have those answers. And people want to shade under your covering because it's safe. Come on, the sun isn't burning them. The heat isn't burning them up. The, the worries of life, here it talks about uh, they're, they're not worried by long lengths of drought. Why? Where others are worrying, you know, what's happening now? You know, uh, the, the big, the big uh, manhunt on toilet paper. Then it was the big manhunt on flour and eggs. And what's it going to be next? But this person, it doesn't matter if there's drought because their roots go into where the unseen, 
the the river might be dry but there's still water under the veins under the the crust of the dirt because that's where our roots go and our nourishment our immunity comes from the the being uh in relationship with god and he sustains us and he's the one that feeds us he's the one that builds our immunity up they never stop producing fruit so people are seeing this people are seeing the the beautiful fruit that's hanging while you know what their lives their hearts withering and, and their hearts failing and they're thinking man what's going on with that person what's going on with my friend And I want to say this, people are going to be eating from that. How awesome would it be that during this time uh, that people are fretting, during this time where their immunity is failing, that they can come and say, hey, how come you look so fit? Hey, how come your words that you speak uh, give me hope? Well, we can tell them today. It's time for them to be immune or get their immunity up and get get their immunity um, increased and for some having a new heart transplant like you have had this morning see these guys dr jeremiah and dr david their immunity is up to date their their immunization plan has been followed you know what they've, they've spent time uh, building and increasing. They've spent time meditating in the Word day and night. And you know what? When we read that, I think sometimes we can think, oh, well, hang on. If I've got to do that day and night, there's no time for anything else. If I've got to be reading day and night, you know, meditating day and night, how do, how do I effectively uh, help somebody else? Well, the fact of the matter, it doesn't say reading day and night. It says meditating. And you know what? You might start off with reading in the morning, uh, your devotion. But then during the day, uh, you know what, you're, you're going through your day and you know, we're busy and everyone is busy in life. But you know what, that's constantly being marinating you. It saturates you because you're thinking about it in your heart. It's being deposited there. And that's what it means to meditate. So because you know your sustenance, you get your strength, uh, you, know, you get your increase for your immunity from the Word of God and your relationship with Jesus. You want to meditate on Him. So maybe today you're listening and your immunization plan's outdated. You know, you thought, oh, look, it's not important. So you've discontinued the process and now you know that your immunity is down. Now, it may have come through disappointment. Uh, you know, through tragedy, you've had a hit and tragedy's come. Um, there's been loss, um, unforgiveness, you know, you've been carrying unforgiveness and then that's gone to bitterness and now you're angry or, and, and you're just hurt. Well, I want to say today, if you find yourself in one of those areas and, and more, the list goes on, you know what, your heart needs help. You might, you, you're carrying a diseased heart and some of you, might even know that you're prone to having a heart attack. And I want to say this, it doesn't matter how weak you are today. Come on. It doesn't matter where you find yourself today. You might say, well, you know, I've got this heart disease. Is it too late for me? Absolutely not. Here's something that Psalm 34, 18 says, and we're coming to a close. The Lord is close to those whose hearts are crushed by pain and he's always ready to restore the repentant one. And you know what, today, if that's you, you know that you know, there's that, that pain. Uh, uh, my dad uh, suffered a heart attack and, and I, I remember the cringing, the, 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 I guess that, that tightness that comes if, uh, around his physical heart. If you know that there's, a, there's that cringing in your spiritual heart, there's that tightness and you know that you need help. Well, today, Jesus is here to help you. He's saying that, hey, you know what? If you've been crushed by pain, I'm here for you. And this is what Matthew 12, 21 says. And this is, this is the gentleness, uh, 20 and 21. This is how gentle our Lord is. And this is speaking about Jesus. He will not crush the weakest reed. A reed is just a, 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 a hair or, or a thickness of a hair uh, that is standing up and is just there on its own. He's not going to go and step on it. And you might feel like you're on your own. And I want to say this, a cure to a lonely heart 
is being alone with Jesus. Come on, I need you to get alone with Jesus and that's going to cure your lonely heart. So, so he's not going to step on it. And what does it say? He will not crush the weakest reed or put out the flickering candle. You know, if that, that candle's flickering, he's not, just going, he's not going to put it out. What he's saying today, hey, if, if that's flickering, if your heart is flickering, I'm going to fan it with the Holy Spirit. You know, I want to come in, in there. I'm going to start fanning that, that, that candle and we're going to increase that flame. Uh, we're going to get you uh, to increase your immunity because we, what, what he wants to do is have a relationship with you and he wants you to start to, to, to meditate on his word. He wants you to start to walk with him. He wants you to plant yourself. And maybe today uh, you're watching and you're not planted in a church. I'd like to say, if you're not, uh, please go to our website, uh, www.centerpointchurch.net.au and register your inquiry. Somebody will get to you, will contact you, and love to have a chat with you and, and lead you in, in the way that we should go, that God's designed and planned for you. And this morning, this is what he says, finally, he will cause justice to be victorious. Come on, he wants you just the way that he created you to be. He wants you to live in victory. The Bible says that we are more than overcomers and today that's for you. And then he says, and his name will be the hope of all the world. So not only does he want that for you, but he wants that for those in your world. So today, if you are a Christian Come on, we prayed for those that have never had a transplant. But right now, if you're a Christian and you know that there's some disease, this morning, will you raise your hand? And this morning, will you make a commitment to build your immunity? Will you make a commitment to increase your immunity, to protect and guard your heart? And the way to do that is to plant yourself. Come on, the way to do that is to dedicate yourself day and night, meditating in the Word, thinking about those things rather than, you know, taking advice from, as the Bible said, those that are against the things of God, whether just standing there and not being a voice and then just sitting with others that don't even care about the things of God. What I'm asking you today is to remove yourself from those environments and to plant yourself in the environment of the Word of God and in the hope and confidence of God. Will you raise your hand and allow me to pray for you? Father God, I pray for each person that's raised their hand. This morning, Lord, I know that, Lord, there are people now making a commitment, Lord, to increase and build their spiritual immunity of their spirit and their heart. Lord, we know, God, that you look on the heart. You don't look on the outside. Your word says that you look on the heart of a man. And this morning, God, some of us, our immune systems are down. They're shot. But, Father, we ask by your precious blood that you would just renew our commitment. Lord, we renew our commitment. Uh, to your commitment, to sending the Holy Spirit that he would care for us, Lord, that he would guide us and Lord, that he would lead us into all truth so that we might, Lord, be strengthened and continue living our life as you would want us to live, Lord, in Jesus' name. Uh, it's been such a, a pleasure being able to come into your home and I want to thank you once again for allowing us to do so. We pray you have a great day. And from John DeCecco and the Centerpoint Church team, goodbye and God bless.